Hello and welcome back to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here with me in Wales. I've got a 10 by 8 canvas in front of me. Let's just get straight on to the painting. Okay, so I've given it a quick coat of um, an ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, and that's just a ground. It's nice and dry. So let's just get straight on to this painting. I'm going to select a, a uh, half inch short flat. No, I, I think I'll go for, yeah, I think I'll go for half. I think I'll go for a half inch or flat. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's just pick up a little bit of my medium mix. Um, you can, that's available on the website. Please pop along there and have a look at that. It stops underbinding. We'll talk no more about it. Um, you can use just plain water if you want to. Whatever takes your fancy, as they say here in Wales. Yeah, so we're going to get a bit of white. I'm going to mix a bit of white there. I'm going to get some ultramarine blue to it. I'm going to make a nice warm blue. There we go. Uh, ultramarine blue this t t is this one is actually on the red side so it's got a bit of a a purpley hue to it a purpley hue it really is and so as you can see that's not a bad match actually what i already put on there but that's fine because i want to i want a nice let's just get a little bit more blue let's just darken that up just a touch let's get, see if we can there's better that's better that's what we want a little bit of contrast up in the top corner there like that and um I use um, Windsor Newton Galleria acrylic. There we go. Um, it's a really nice paint. Um, highly recommended. Um, that's what I use in the studio on a regular basis. Um, there are other brands on Marketplace, um, such as Liquitex and all these other things that you can have a look at. But personally, I like the Windsor Newton. Um, I find it a really nice creamy consistency. Just adding a little bit more white now to that blue lightening that blue and bringing that down in there like that i haven't got a lot of sky in this one today um, i'm just going to try and limit it to a little bit of sky because we want to try and finish this off within about 20 minutes that's the that's the goal i've set myself if i run over that it doesn't matter i don't mind i don't mind whatsoever but there we are that's the goal we've set it's nice to have a little goal sometimes and these little quick paintings are brilliant uh, for practice that's why I like them. So I'm making sure I haven't got my big head in the way. <laughs> okay, so let's get a little bit more blue to the side. I'm going to bring a little bit of red to it. Um, my palette is a limited palette today, as you can see. Um, I've just used some scrape. I've scraped some yellow up and some red up and some burnt number up off a, off another painting that I was doing earlier. And I thought, well, we'll just as well use that up and um, try and come up with a painting within that colour range. So I've, I've darkened that down and mixed a bit of red to the blue which has given me a little bit of a purple effect and I want to bring a little bit of a mountain down like that. It's a bit light, a bit dark. I mean I want to lighten that up a bit. So we're just going to chuck a little bit of chuck a little bit of white into this just to lighten that up a bit because it was a bit dark. There we go, that's a little bit better. And then just bring that mountain down somewhere like that. There. We can put a little bit of contrast on that mountain in just a second and we're just going to stop it there like that now let's get a little bit of that dark color let's get a little bit of that dark color let's add a little bit of blue to it let's just get a contrasty color there we go and have a look how does that work no a little bit darker than that and sometimes you need to adjust your colors um and i would suggest you just do a little bit at a time like that there we go I'm taking a bit of excess off my brush because i don't want to overload my brush i'm just gonna that's a nice colour. I just want to just lightly pull in just a little bit of shadow there, like that. Okay, now I want to blow that up a bit more now. Blowing that up a bit more. Using the same brush, using the same colours. See the variation of colours there? It's ultramarine blue with white and ultramarine blue with um, a little bit of red and um, a little bit of white. We lightened it down. And that's more on the red side, this is more on the blue side. That's what we're looking for. Getting your brush like this, and then just pushing down like that. It could look like possibly there's woo, some distant distant trees there, all in shadow. And we'll have this little effect coming up like that. There you go. We'll just hide it there. You don't have to go all the way across. You can if you want to. But I'm not going to go in that. I'm not going to do that in this instance. So, just using the very edge of the brush, turn it down there like that. Take it down and lighten that off. Pull in, pull in away like that. 
and they're not going to go and fade into their, into oblivion. There you are. That's all there. Let's just put a little bit of colour in there, because that's going to just show through a little bit on the next stage. There we go. Now I'm going to wash my brush. I wash my brush three stages. I go in some dirty water. I go into some soap. I go back into some dirty water. And I go back into some cleaner water. There we go. And I just check my brush. And there's no pigment left in my brush. And I miss the bin. <laughs> so let's have a look. Let's get some raw sienna this time. Let's get some raw sienna. Raw sienna is very transparent. So you can add a little bit of white to it. Just to make it a little bit more opaque. And a little bit of yellow to it. There we go. A little bit of yellow. Now we've got to think about our colour. Well, let's just get a touch of blue because we want to green it off a touch. There we go. Blue and yellow make green. And that raw sienna is just going to make that. There we go. Lovely. A bit more yellow. A bit yellower than that. Maybe a touch of white as well. That's a little bit better. We want a little bit brighter. Take the excess off my brush. It's a li it looks like a, like a caramel colour, but we'd, that's okay. We want to put some bushes there, like that, just to stand in front of that blue. This is what we're doing. And um, they could be autumn trees, couldn't they? They could be autumn trees. Yes. And how are we looking? We, we, we're about six minutes in. Don't try and rush this. Don't try and do this in the same time scale as me, because this is about learning the process. And um, I don't want you to rush your paintings and get upset because you can't paint them in the same time scale as me. Um, these are just lessons to show you techniques. And you take your time with these techniques. A little bit of white. Just putting a little bit of highlight on them trees like that. There you go. Just a little bit of highlight. Just making them sparkle. There we go. Lovely. I'm pulling that across. Again, like that. Wow. What a lovely little scene that is. Now let's get some green. So we need to mix some yellow and some ultramarine blue. This should give me a quite a dark green. There we go. Because it's got red in it. So we must remember that um, red and green are complements. There's a little bit of red in our blue, so that's gonna just gonna alter the tone of that colour. So we mix that yellow with, say, a cerulean blue. Australian blue is more on the green side, it would be a lot lighter, a lot lighter green than that. So remember this when you mix in it paints. Get to know your colours. Get to know your colours. Let's put a little bit of bank down there like this. And this reminds me of an old Bob Ross painting, this one. There we go. Just put some. Just stick them in there. Pick up a bit of paint down the edge of that brush. Don't want a lot of this. Don't want a lot of this. Just Make it look as if there's some greenery going on there, maybe. There we go. There we are. That's, that's it. That's all you want to worry about. There you go. Blend that in like that. <laughs> okay, wash that brush. Now I'm going to let that dry off a little bit. Um, I'm not going to put the air dryer on it yet. Um, now what we want to do is get some yellow. Get some yellow. Get some yellow. Get some raw sienna. Look at that lovely colour. Oh, that's a nice colour. Warm that yellow up a bit. There we are. And let's just chuck. Let's just chuck a little bit of colour there, like that. Bring that down there. Just pull that in. Maybe it's simple. Easy. Never painted before? Try it. Never know until you try. I didn't know until I tried. So, right, let's get a little bit of raw sienna. Get a bit of burnt umber to the raw sienna. The burnt umber is going to darken that raw sienna up. And it's also going to make it a little bit more opaque. Mixing that in with the colour you got on your brush. It doesn't matter. And then just pulling that in. Like that. And bring a bit of contrast into this area here like that. You can build that up again in another layer in a minute. You can see how transparent that paint is in actual fact. You know, even the burnt umber has made it a little bit more opaque, but it's still not opaque enough. We don't want to put black in there yet, anyway. So we'll just mix that in there like that. There we go. And I can still see that's a bit wet. 
So I might have to put the air dryer on it in a minute. We'll mix a little bit of burnt umber there and we will put a bit of black to it. There we go. So a bit of burnt umber and a bit of black is going to give you something like a Van Dyke brown. There we go. It's just a dark brown basically. That's all you want is a dark brown. There we go. And bring that up there like that. Just paint enough fun. And you can hear a pity patty of rain upon the roof of my studio again today. I don't know what it is. But it always seems to be raining here in Wales. But we have had some nice sun this year. Yes, and that's what's inspiring me to paint all these brightly coloured paintings. There we go. Let's get a little bit of that yellowy colour. Just picking that up on the same brush. That'll do for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the hairdryer on that. And... Um, Normally about 12 inches away and a moderate heat will do the job, um, but I do tend to get a bit close because I want to speed up the process, so I'll be back in a minute. We hope that is dry enough. Going back to our one inch short flat, that's the big one there, I'm just going to get a little bit of moisture there, and I'm just going to get a little bit of this colour very very thin very very thin now you can do this with a medium mix because it's not it's not going to underbind the paint but be careful if you do this with just using water because there's a possibility it may flake in time not immediately but in time but we can do this with a medium mix because that's not going to happen so i'm just putting a color wash over there like that and that's just to, to blend all that sky together like that now um, I'm picking up um, another um, little filbert brush I've got here. I'm just picking up a little bit of white just on the tip of my brush, not a lot. And I'm just going to put in some cloud shapes like that, just blending it in like this. There's no, there's no te strong definition of clouds, but just a little bit just to say, look, there's clouds in the sky today. So that's all you need to do. It's not worry about painting clouds. Just put a few shapes in like this, look. And then just blend them away like that. And that'll be enough when that dries, just to show there's a little bit of definition there. Maybe some clouds floating away in the sky like that. There we go. A bit more down there like that. A little bit over the, the mountain. Just going to wet the brush. Wet the brush again, taking the excess off the paint. Because this is, this is quite opaque, so we want to just lighten down the tops of those mountains like that just to knock them back a bit be careful with this because titanium white is very very opaque we need a little bit of um we need a little bit of zinc mixing white in fact but no, this is fine picking up a little bit of that purple and now we're just going to put a few not too much paint on your brush when you do this just put a few highlights there, here, and there, like that. Just to give a little bit of dimension to that. There we go. I quite like that. I do. Okay, so, washy, washy, brushy, brushy. There we are. And um, I'm going to pick up, let me have a look what we've got here. Um, I think I've got one of my um, brushes here somewhere. Well, I've got, in actual fact, I've got an old got an old stipply old brush, I don't know what this is, I don't know how much that cost me. I've picked this up for years and years and years, but we'll try it, see what happens. Let's pick up, um, let's pick up some yellow, a little bit of red. Let's just orange that up. There we go. Nice dark colour, nice dark orange. And let's just put some orange like this. Ooh, looks strange, doesn't it? A bit of burnt ember to it. A bit of burnt ember to that orange. There we are. Yellow, burnt ember, and red. Let's display that brush. It doesn't matter about this brush. It's an old brush. It's okay. It's done years of work. There we are. It's just some colour in there now. and we'll Bring some colour up here. Like this. Just splodging on. Splodgy, splodge, splodge. Like that. That's a Welsh word, by the way. Splodgy splodge. <laughs> it is. Anyway, just push that in there like that. Get some colour in. Put a bit more burnt umber to it. Oh, we're on 15 minutes. This is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> it 
it doesn't matter i'm enjoying myself now i did plan on doing this a little bit quicker but hey things don't always work out like we expect them to and and we always need to set aside some time if things start going well and you're enjoying yourself then don't worry about it we don't stress about things like that i don't there's no need to no need all i'm doing is putting some dark in place in order to show light because there's no point painting light on light because you're not going to see it so we need to put some shadows in there we go let's get rid of that paper before i splodge my face with it leave a little gap in there leave a little bit of blue showing through because that could be a lake couldn't it it could be get a little bit of black and let's just darken up some areas like this and this is shadow we put in our shadow in place already there we are mixing darken that up okay so let's go over to the other side now i'm just going to mix some more yellow just going to blodge it up blodge 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 and we're going to put some more dark and yellow color in there like that leave some gaps now leave some gaps leave some gaps there we go leave some gaps get some darker color bring that darker color in doesn't matter if it goes green because grass is green it is lovely now now it's looking like something so we get this brush now and let's just drag a little bit of this around get a little bit of that dark color i'm gonna cough get a little bit of that dark color excuse me if i remember i did that out <laughs> just put a little bit of dark color in there just some shadow in and we got a we got a bit of a we got a bit of a windy path coming in here there we are that's a path we walk down when we go and sit by the lake I've decided that's a lake. <laughs> when we sit by the lake, there we go. Let's get a little bit of white just on the tip of that brush now, and let's just bring some light in there yeah, like that. Using the same brush. We don't need expensive brushes to paint. You can use any brush. All you need is a bit of an imagination, a bit of practice, and a lot of confidence. That's all you need. There you go. That's all you need. I'm going to put that in the water. Um, I'm now going to get um, that little filbert brush again. There we go. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. Just, I just want to put some. I just want to put some ripply type of light effects in this water there, like that. I want to bring a bit of shadow in. There. It's a bit of that greeny colour now coming in. There we go. Rub it off with your finger. That'll do. <laughs> if all else fails, rub it with your finger. Let's get a little bit of white now. And then just put some... A little bit of... Rub it with your finger. Why not? Who says you can't do that? <laughs> I tell you what you could do. You could get a little detailing brush. Um, have I got one? I have. This is a very small detail brush. In actual fact, it's a, it's a number zero. Zero. And we could put some... Don't want a lot of paint on the brush. There we are. Just put a little few... Little tiny lines like that, just to represent maybe just ripples in that water and light catching. And there you go. You go to town on that. I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. Okay, so I'm going to wash that brush, chuck that there. I'm going to pick up uh, another detailing brush. I've got a detailing brush here, and this is a number one. 
Um, it doesn't matter if you haven't got all these brushes. Just, you know, as long as you've got some round ones or detail brushes and you've got a couple of filberts or um, short flats or, you know, you don't need a lot of brushes. You only need a handful of brushes. There we are. I've got a detail brush. And now I'm just going to go in like this. I'll just draw some trunks in. There we go. There's one trunk. I can go there like that. Okay, we've got to think of another trunk now. Maybe another one going behind there. Like that. Pushing down. It's going behind those bushes. Like that. And that could be coming up there. And you could have one there. This paint is still wet, so it doesn't matter. It's just drag them through like that. And we can have another one going off there like that. Bit a bit of moisture. If it doesn't flow, if your paint's not flowing, bit a bit bit of moisture to it. There we are. That could go up. There like that. That actually look, looks pretty good with the way that paint is just pulling off there and looks like as if there's some sort of a tree or something there. A uh, bit of burnt umber again, a bit of black, um, and I want to put a another one in here like that. Another big old mighty tree. There you go. Maybe I should have dried the paint in, but it doesn't matter. There you go. It looks as if it's light catching that now, and there we are. Let's put another out there we've got another branch crunch like that we put another tree in there let's get some more black on my brush the bend number an old cronky one now he's an old cronky old tree this one there you go let's go behind that one I could be just coming up there and you could have a little branch here and a little branch there and you could have another branch there and whatever you you decide you decide how many branches and how many trees you got I'm gonna put another one there another big one another big tree like that that's going in front of that one there you go Big one. Must be the mummy one. Must be the mummy tree, that one. <laughs> you decide. You decide. I just put a little bit of shadow. Just a couple of rocks, maybe. Just pushing out by there like that. Now, I'm going to get that little filbert brush again. There he is. No, it's a short flat, isn't it? Yeah, this one's a short flat, that's right, that's what I wanted. <laughs> okay, bit of burnt ember, bit of burnt ember. Let's just tighten up. Let's just tighten up this colour, bit of red sienna, raw sienna, red sienna, raw sienna, Clive. Let's get a bit of yellow to it. I just want to lighten up. Pulling it down like that. Getting a bit of Burned ember and black, and just chucking a bit of colour in there like that. It makes it a bit of shadow, some shadow under there. There we go. Bit of yellow, a bit of raw sienna and yellow. There we go. Bit of raw sienna and yellow, and just putting some colour in. Maybe light sparkling around there. I don't know. Let's get some straight into some yellow there. Maybe that's just a little bit of grass or something there, I don't know. Maybe that's just a little bit of grass or something. We could get a little bit of blue onto that, couldn't we? Let's make some nice green. There you go. Let's put some let's just put some green there. Sp 
sparkly sparkly green just a representation of color to represent that that's what we want now we got this black and burned ember again let's move into that and um, I think we're moving on to about half hour <laughs> so much for me making a quick video and we'll, we'll put a little fence post in here like that there's one fence post no why is there a fence post you I do not know uh, in fact I'm just gonna leave that fence post a minute I'm gonna put another one across there I'm gonna put one across there in a minute I wanna I wanna put this um is that brush I'm, I I made that all our color was with this brush wasn't it now we need to do really I, I need to dry that off because it's quite thick so one sec one second And I'd like to draw your attention to www.cly5art.co.uk where you can actually visit the shop for all your art supplies. Um, I've got paint, I've got blending white, acrylic clear, I've got medium mix, I've got brush selections, I've got palettes, and I've got a cleaning station for your brushes. So just pop along to www.cly5art.co.uk and, um, and I look forward to seeing you in the shop. Okay, so um, let's, let's add a little bit more yellow to this green i want to lighten this right up now let's get a nice light green because we're gonna add a bit of white to that in a second and do the same again push it down push it down like that taking excess off really splaying this brush in fact because we want to put some light color now like that on top of this dark color they say just think of trees when you're doing this. Think think of trees when you're doing this. So think of the shape of the trees. You don't want to destroy all that dark that you've put on. Think of shape as well. You don't want to destroy all the shadow. That's not the not the, the plan here. The plan is to leave some of that in place so it looks as if this is real grass or leaves or whatever you're using this method for you can use this for grass as well grass areas notice I went over a little bit there because I want to show a little bit of light they might be on the leaves on the very edge of the the tree there and just all you can see is just see because the light is just sparkling through and all you can see is just the leaves you can't see any shadow because the light is it's passing through them there you go and that's a good thing that's what we want to show put some in front of these trees now like that this could be a few bushes then down there like that there you go let's sparkle that up with a bit of white now get some white in there and carefully don't go too light too quick again I'm just going to take some excess off my brush and see how we do with this now very gently you don't want to go so mad with this you just want to put in some highlights there we go you just want you're going to be very sparing with this or your eyes you're going to spoil your effect that you're trying to accomplish and what we're trying to accomplish is nice shape sparkling bushes with shadows underneath them some nice warm colors in between where the little squirrels go and hide and little hedgehogs are there and, and the woodpeckers peck in the tree and got to give them somewhere to live as i said in another video god was a, a brilliant artist so let's do him justice there you go just a few little light marks there like that and um, just goes to show that you can do any style of painting with a minimal amount of brush strokes there we go does that look nice I think that looks nice let's put some bushes there 
a little bit mild today. I think we're a little bit mild there. Let's just put a, let's mix up a little bit of dark colour for a minute. That's better. There we go. Nice bright bush. <laughs> okay, so what can we do now? Um, well, I'm just going to get a little tiny detail brush. Again, I'm just going to go into a bit of red. I'm here and there. I'm just going to put in some little dots like that, just to represent maybe an odd flower or two. And then we can we can rinse that out, and then we can pick up some white paint just on a very tip of our brush. Again, very very careful now. We don't want too many of these. There we go. Just a few little dots here and there by the red, which will show the red off. There we go. Now we can pick up some blue again. Maybe put some fox gloves or something in like that. There we are. And if you've got a strip lining brush, um, and that's one of them long, thin type brushes like that then what you can do is you can pick up make it really nice and thin pick up some of that burnt umber and black mix and then we can just put in a few twigs just to give it a little bit of dimension you can add a few little branches to your tree just a little bit more realism there we go and you can put in as few or as many as you want it just adds to the the illusion of maybe there's something going on there there we go now what we're going to do is find that brush that we had when we was doing the fence posts do you remember that brush i do <laughs> picking up some black and burned umber and now we're going to put another fence post roughly on the same plane. The plane is there. So in, in line with your horizon it is. And just concentrate. Get that nice shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because these are these are wooden fence posts and they, they're all crinky cronky. Some are a bit weird. I know we could do is just another one there I think there we go that's another one there paint's a bit wet it doesn't matter we will I got a plan for that <laughs> and okay and we need to put this like that a bit more burnt and a bit more black just go like that another bit there bit more going across don't know what this fence is doing I don't know perhaps it's a boundary fence I don't know what it is and then we just put a little shadow let's just wash the little brush a little bit just just stain the state the brush is stained that's all it is and let's just put a shadow mark Under there, we can put our shadows in. Maybe the sun is shining. As easy as that. Just gives a little bit of dimension to it, doesn't it? It does. Now, we've got this um, detailing brush. Let's get a little bit of red. Let's get a bit of raw sienna. Let's just, let's just, let's just go to town now. Let's, let's just put some bits of colour being picked up on this wood like that whatever you make the colours up whatever colour you want whatever colour you think is going to fit with this this fence make it look an old wooden old fence there we go an old wooden fence got a little bit of colour to it there we are a little bit of colour to it
maybe today our bird is not s not flying in the sky. Perhaps he's just sitting. There, like that. A little bit of white just on the tip of my brush, just to give him a little bit of highlight. You decide if that's a bird <laughs> or squirrel. <laughs> it could be both. It could be both. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Let's get. Um, I got a. I got a brush here. I got some green. So let's make some green up. There we go. And let's just put some grass. Highlight on the grass like that. Because if it's casting a shadow, then it's going to be picking up some light. We'll flick it up some grass like that. What a lovely painting. It really is today. I think I should stop now, Clive. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of this white paint. And I want to smooth that edge off there like that. There you go. Because it looked a bit harsh to me. There we are. What a wonderful painting that is today. And we're on 38 minutes. And I do apologise for such a long lesson. But there we go. When we have fun in the studio, um, everything comes together. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And paint away that stress of everyday life with me in the studio. And have a good day, good week, a good month, a good year. Because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this. As time is relative on YouTube. So from me in the studio today... Thanks for painting along that stress. Yes, I'll see you next time. Bye. Nice. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe.